The inverse square law for gamma absorption. Gamma radiation rarely interacts with air and so the number of gamma photons passing through spherical shells of increasing radius around a gamma source will be constant. Let's show that with a diagram. Here we have a gamma source and if I draw a sphere of radius R around this as virtually none of the gamma radiation will be absorbed by the air in this sphere all the gamma photons emitted by the source will have to pass at some point through this spherical shell. The area of a sphere of radius r is given by 4 pi r squared. We could draw another shell of radius 2r. This would have area 4 pi times 2r squared and so on with another shell of radius 3r has area 4 pi times 3r squared. The photons passing through this shell will also pass through this shell and this shell. So the intensity will drop off as the inverse of the square of the radius. If the number of gamma photons emitted per second is n the intensity at a distance r from the source will be given by n over a where a is the area of the sphere. So the gamma radiation in air obeys an inverse square law where the count rate c will be equal to the entire count rate from the source in all directions c naught over the area 4 pi r squared. So c naught is the total count rate for the source this will be a constant over a time period that is short compared to the half-life of the source. We can investigate this relationship by having a gamma source and a Geiger-Muller tube connected to a scalar counter. We could have the tube a changing distance r from the source. One slight problem, the gamma source will actually be shielded, the gamma source itself being inside the shielding and coming from an extra distance r naught from the outside shielding that we can measure from. We showed on the previous slide that the count rate c will be equal to the entire count rate in all directions from the source c naught over the area 4 pi r squared. c naught is a constant as is 4 pi so we can simplify this to c is equal to k over the distance which we've shown to be r plus r naught squared. We can simplify this to r is equal to the square root of the constant times 1 over root of the count rate minus r naught the distance from the outer side of the casing to the source itself. So we now have this written in the form of a variable is equal to a constant times a variable plus, or in this case minus, another constant. This is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So if we plot a graph of the distance r on the y-axis against 1 over the square root of the count rate on the x-axis, we should get a straight line with gradient equal to root k k being equal to c naught, the entire count from the source, over 4 pi, and y intercept is equal to minus r naught, the distance from the source to the outside of the casing.